Mommy Space, a place where you can remember who you are in the midst of it all. This podcast gives moms of all stages a voice to share their experiences and the truth that there is no right way to mom. Welcome to Mommy Space. This is Bree, and today I'm here with Melissa Hislop. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We got connected through Instagram, and I believe I have interviewed a couple of your f- close friends, which is very exciting. Um, and I, yeah, I was just intrigued by you and following you on um, Instagram. I just am loving right now, like all of these connections I'm making on Instagram because. I didn't really believe in that before, but it's just very exciting for me. So, yeah, I'm just happy to have you on and um, hear your yeah, hear your story. (laughs) But before we kind of dive in, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family, where you're located, and and then we can dive into like daily life stuff too. Sure. Um, So my name is Melissa Hislop. Um, Currently, uh, my little family we live here in Redding, California. Um, so Northern California, somewhere I never thought I'd live, (laughs) um, but here we are. Um, and just, I guess in our daily life, it looks really, um, normal. I, I'm a part-time, I work part-time as well. Um, I just go into the office one day a week and then I work remote the other days. So I'm home with my baby girl, Nora, um, who is my favorite little person, um, and uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what our life looks like. Um, and, yeah, we're just really happy that we get to be here right now. And so, yeah. That's awesome. Now, did you guys move there for school? No, we actually didn't, um, surprisingly. Uh, my husband's older brother uh, and his wife, they moved out here a year before we did. Um, and so we, we were – actually in Virginia at the time, Fredericksburg, Virginia, and uh, part of a small house of prayer called the Fredericksburg Prayer Furnace. Um, wow. And uh, and we were just, we were doing house of prayer and we just felt like, like it was time to, to move and time to go somewhere else. And we just didn't know where yet. And um, the Lord just started uh, speaking to us through friends and dreams and that we were supposed to move to to Reading. And wow. so at that time, we didn't have like Nora yet. Um, and we had just gotten married literally like three months before in wow. June. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, and so it was all kind of a whirlwind. Um, and then, yeah, and then we packed up our, our little Subaru Forester and drove across the country to oh Reading. Gosh. And wow. yeah, no jobs, no no house, no wow. nothing except our stuff. And um, thankfully, his brother was here with his wife. So he had a place to stay. Um, but yeah, so now we're here. Dang, yeah. that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I would definitely love to hear like more of kind of what that process looked like for you guys, um, even leading yeah. into you getting finding out you're pregnant. Like, that's just kind of a big deal. And I, I know yeah. I've spoken to other um, mamas who have done something similar, but I haven't actually talked or asked about what was that like, you know, picking up everything and like, and moving to somewhere you've never been before, yeah. or you know, and, and starting over, like, what was that like for you guys? Yeah. Um, I, I think initially we were re- really excited. Because, <laughs> I mean, we were, you know, we just got married, no kids yet, yeah. you know, and, um, just, we had just our life together. And so everything was kind of like this big adventure. And so, um, it was scary just cause, um, both of our families, like our mother or father, or the rest of our siblings are on the East coast. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and our, both of our families are very like close knit. Wow. Um, and so, it was, it was scary, but it was also exciting at the same time. And we knew that we felt peaceful because we knew that that's where, um, the Lord was taking us. Um, but, uh, honestly, I think the first year or to two years here were really hard. Um, just because we didn't, um, have really a lot of connections or community because we didn't do school. Um, we, we had just moved here, like, you know, and so everything was so new. 
Um, and Reading itself, if you haven't, you know, whoever yeah. is listening, if you haven't been to Reading, um, it's it's grown since we moved here, um, yeah. just with diversity in businesses. But um, it's very different from uh, what Andrew and I are used to in, in regards to um like a city yeah um and so, <laughs> so and so and so it was just all new and um so it was it was hard um uh but now I'm so grateful because we've we've found people that we really love and mm-hmm. friends and have built community and um there were a lot of tears shed <laughs> the oh, first man. two years sure. but uh but yeah so but now yeah looking back I wouldn't have changed anything um wow. yeah it's grown us a lot. That's for sure. Amazing. Yeah. I, would, I was thinking that would be a pretty like amazing and stretching adventure for a new couple. Like, yeah, yeah. That's like, would I think challenge and help you in a lot of ways grow in ways that you probably wouldn't have experienced maybe where if you had stayed where you were, but like, yeah. okay. So tell us then the, the story of your journey into motherhood then, now that you're in Northern California, you're away from family, like, what was that all like for you? Yeah, well, um, so we, we, honestly, we weren't trying to have (laughs) just yet. Um, So I think it was a year and and six months, I think, into our marriage about, and I got pregnant. And, um, and I just remember telling Andrew and my husband, and he was like, in complete shock. He was like, what? you know you're pregnant <laughs> and and he was excited afterwards but yeah. that he had to kind of totally. you know go through that and and really process that and for me um I've always I've always wanted to be a mom and and growing up and I always you know I think I would talk to friends and be like oh my gosh I can't wait to be a mom and you know I'm I just can't imagine how it's going to be but I know it's going to be amazing and um and I just I had never pictured having children super early in my marriage um Mm. and just away from my parents Mm. um and so that was just that was new too and I think even with just with what I mentioned having just recently moved we were still building community so um so at times it was a little bit hard but um but anyways I'm so sorry I like going on a bunny trail um no 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 that's great I love it (laughs) do it um but uh, but yeah, so I, I have, I wanted to be a mom. Um, but it was just all of those feelings still yeah. of trying to get settled in a new place that mm-hmm. it was almost sometimes hard to even, um, wrap my mind around that mm-hmm. I was going to about to be a mom. Yeah. Um, not that I wasn't excited about it. Not sure. that I wasn't excited about, um, Nora, but it, it just, you know, it just wasn't what I had expected or it wasn't what I had thought it looked sure. like. Um, um, but anyways, but through that, uh, we, I'm connected with Chantel and, yes. um, Britt and just an amazing group of moms. And it was just, uh, really something I was, um, wanting and looking for. And it kind of, another friend connected me to someone else who was in this mom group that I know. And so it was just so, mm-hmm. um, such a blessing, really a real blessing for me, um, to have, met them when I was, um, pregnant (laughs) with Nora. And so, um, so that was just such a godsend and it was so kind, um, the kindness of the Lord to do that for me. Um, so yeah, I, does that answer your question? Yes, it totally (laughs) does. Yeah. I, I would love to hear even more like, um, if, if you want to, please feel free not to go here if you don't want to, but even, um, the journey of like uh, your pregnancy and then giving birth, like, and then what's it been like now being away from family um, and adjusting to becoming a new mom when you were still kind of finding your footing um, in the midst of like being pregnant and stuff. Sure. Um, So, I mean, I had a relatively, uh, I would say easy pregnancy. It was just, you know, there wasn't any complications. There wasn't anything, um, hard you know it was pretty smooth and um and I'm so grateful for that uh and then even just the the pregnancy in itself well with a birth like it I I believe um it was how long I was in labor for I think it was five hours no way yeah so it was something around that I believe yeah 
it was wow, short you know it could have been maybe six but um but it was something that I was so I was kind of shocked but it was something I had kind of been praying for and asking wow. the Lord for not that I was like oh okay it has to be like sure, this sure. you know um but yeah so all of that was relatively easy um oh, wow. but I think I think what was hard for me was um was after I had her after I had Nora and um just adjusting to all of a sudden not mm. being able to <laughs> do things that yeah. I normally <laughs> had the liberty to do um, yeah. or the freedom um, and just realizing how um, how much of being a mom is really just like being sacrificing as well mm. um, and not in a poor me sort of way mm. or yeah. self-pity but in a, in a way of like really growing in love and realizing that um, this other person is fully dependent on you, mm-hmm. um, even in your weakness and even in when you're like, oh my gosh, I have nothing else to give, yeah, you know, or, totally or I am so tired. I've woken up the third time this mm-hmm. night and I am exhausted. Um, and uh, just, um, I guess, realizing that there's more in, in me than what I thought there was. Mm-hmm. Um, and the stretching and even just the sleepless nights and um, realizing that there is um, just a depth and a well, I think that that women have. And yeah. sometimes we don't realize um, until we're um, until we're, we're placed in a position of, or even being a mom. Um, and that, you know, that yeah. could look like even adopting or, you know, yeah, totally. in different ways. Yeah. But um, and so, yeah, so I think that that was hard for me. I think, too, is just that. I had this idea of motherhood that um, nobody really, I feel like, talks about this is that, um, you know, when you become a mom, it's just, you know, sometimes breastfeeding hurts. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, yes. And you're running on like five hours of sleep every day for the first, you know, two yeah. weeks or, yeah. <laughs> or, your, or excuse me, your vagina is like in yes. pain. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It's scared or, you know. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and nobody really told me these things. I don't know why. And so just realizing that because I had a hard time breastfeeding Nora yeah. for the first three months where, you know, she would just cry and cry oh. and cry and um, and I would try to feed her and she, she wouldn't want to be fed. And and I know there's so many other you know moms who have gone through similar things or yeah. worse yeah. things, you know, but um, but so that was something that was hard for me. And I think um, just even that a lot of times, sometimes I felt like I was failing, you know, mm. and when you're lack of sleep and and all this stuff and it just makes your emotions a little bit more yeah <laughs> raw, no kidding you know? um oh. and so, so I just remember there's just one point that I was sitting on my sofa and I, I was talking to the Lord and I said Lord you know I really want to do this but I'm like if this if if this is how it's going to be because it's starting to feel draining you know mm-hmm. as much as I wanted to do it it was just I just felt drained because it just wasn't working you know for mm-hmm. both of us and and so she said, Lord, you know, I would love to do this. And if it doesn't work, like, that's okay. Like, you know, you'll give me grace, mm-hmm. something else, formula, whatever it is. But I was like, but if it, you know, if the next day or whatever she needs, you know, the next day that she needs to be breastfed, Lord, let it just click. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, let it just click. And and amazingly, I remember, I think it was three months, it just clicked. Like, no it just, way. Yeah. Oh. And, um, and I just remember being so happy. But yeah, so I, I guess what I would say about just becoming a mom is just I, um, yeah, there's just different things that, you know, I didn't expect coming up or, you know, just leaning into to the Lord and asking him for help and things and so and mm-hmm. grace for things where, um, where I was just so weak. And I was, you know, mm-hmm. if I was at the end of myself and, and he would just come through, um, you know, and so, um, Wow. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the mom group, um, after after having Nora, because Britt and I were the first ones in our group to have our babies on the same day, okay. actually. No so, way. Are you serious? That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are the chances? That's was, amazing. Yeah. And so it was crazy because Nora was a week late. And so crazy thing, too, is that Nora was a week late. And so if she was still had come, uh, they were going to try, they were going to break my water. And I really didn't want that. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I was something else crazy enough. That was something else. I was like, Lord, please, I would love to like have my water break naturally. And yeah. just for that to happen naturally, not that I was against, sure. you know, I'm breaking my water. It's just, that's not what I wanted. Um, 
And so the day, literally on the day, I go into to the doctors. I'm with my mom my and uh, my husband. And we're sitting there at the doctor's office. And I had felt like something had, like I had leaked. I thought it was water or something. And yeah. so yeah. earlier. And so I was just like, okay, I'm having like light cramps, you know, nothing crazy. And so I get up to, to go to the bathroom because they were going to see me. And as I'm literally walking to the bathroom, my water breaks. No way. Literally. Oh my <laughs> Just breaks. <gosh. laughs> oh, that's so, so cool. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I went to my doctor and she's like, well, yep, your water just broke. You're going <laughs> to the hospital today, you know? And so, um, and so Britt had already been at the hospital. She was in labor. And so we were just like a couple oh. of rooms away. Oh, my goodness. And, um, and her daughter came, I think, an hour before Nora. And so, wow. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was so crazy, so fun. They're birthday twins. Oh, my um, gosh. That's so yeah. cool. Even so, being, I think, the first two, we got to experience a lot of, you know, the firsts, you know, trying to figure out things and but having um, a mom group and having, I think, other women who are in a similar season as you was just so, mm. so helpful. And just even a sounding board, you know, we would mm. we have this ongoing uh, mom group text where um, we're like, oh, this happened. You know, is this normal? Or, mm. oh, I didn't sleep well last night. You know, oh, OK, we're yes. praying for you. Or, oh, you know, um, you know, so-and-so is teething, you know, they're having a rough time. Oh, try this. Or so that, that has been just, um, like amazing, you know, and, um, and just even after, you know, having Nora and getting to see our kids, you know, our little toddlers now, like Mm -hmm. grow up together and, and, um, and even just, you know, another mom in our mom group just had another baby girl. And so just Aww. seeing them expanding, you know, our group is wow. expanding. And, and um, so it's just been so beautiful. And, um, and it's just like that we've been able to join arms together and become mm-hmm. friends and, um, and just be real and vulnerable and mm-hmm. also encourage each other. So that has been such I think such a lifeline um, mm-hmm. for me as well. Um, That's so and cool. In my journey of motherhood, yeah. It's so fun yeah. watching you guys from afar and seeing. Like I look forward <laughs> to when you Aww. guys do your like pictures, like lining up all the children and like even yeah. the like fails where they're like some of them are crying and <laughs> they're not all looking at the camera. It's just so sweet, and I think it is like such a beautiful thing because it is such a testament to the power of community and like how important it is and uh, how life-giving it is so I I just love hearing about that okay well I love to um, talk to moms about like some of the things they're passionate in life uh, about and uh, things that bring you life and joy and um, and have you felt that being a mom fuels those things rather than taking from them initially I think I um, I thought wow um, just so I think for the first few months when I had Nora I, and as, as I was adjusting to mom life, I had such a big fear of missing out, um, to be very honest. And, um, and I would scroll through Instagram. I love Instagram, but sometimes, <laughs> just yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I would, I would look at people's lives and other moms and things and I'd be like, wow, how are they doing that? They're, you know, they're traveling, they're doing this and that mm-hmm. and, and, you know, just that comparison would start coming up. And um, and I just remember, I don't know if it was, um, I think one of the girls, actually Chantal, she was saying how, like, the Lord spoke to her in this season to just kind of, um, her season of motherhood to just sit in it. Or and I think I'm having, the, I'm getting the words wrong. But I remember her saying that, and I was just thinking about that. And, and um, in the season of motherhood that I, that, you know, that I was in and am in. And thinking to myself, like, I'm not missing out on anything, you know, Mm. like Nora is the most precious gift that the Lord has given to Andrew and I. And, um, and I was just remember that verse in the Bible that said, um, the children are a blessing and a gift from the Lord, you know, Mm. and blessed are children that are, that you have in your youth and, um, and to be content in the season that I'm in, like, I want to stay here. I want to 
grow and and um in my capacity yes. of love and really so um good. like cherish these that. moments with her because everybody says you know oh it flies by and all this stuff and now I can really see that but um but anyway so once I I when I, so I started to have I think that that shift in my mindset and um not that it wouldn't come up sometimes still but I think um, I began to really see um, right. motherhood and, and just even becoming a mother more as fueling my passions because I started to think, mm-hmm. oh, like I want to show Nora that I didn't stop dreaming. I didn't stop pursuing my passions just mm-hmm. because, you know, I had a child. Like I want her to look and and see me and Andrew um, and us going after the things that make mm-hmm. us come alive mm-hmm. and her say, wow, like mom and dad, you did this. Like, you guys yeah. went for it, you know, and if you, if you went for it, like I can do it too, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so with that, um, I really, my, my dream has always been to, well, one saying, but, um, wow. also, yeah. yeah, but, uh, so that yeah. I, I think I, I've been singing since, since I was little, but, but the Lord really started highlighting um, to me again, um, was that I love to create and, um, more so creating a woman's uh, fashion line. And so, no way. yeah, yeah. And so, um, so I, who, who would have thought <laughs> that um, after having a, a baby, the Lord was like, Hey, what about this? You oh, know? Wow. And, and, um, and so I just started pursuing a t-shirt line for women and um, slowly, but surely, you know, cause just yep, yep. comes and goes in waves. So true. <laughs> Same time. Um, and so that's what I'm currently working on. Um, and I just actually out of my season of in, in season of being a mom, um, this idea came out of, um, bloom 22, where the Lord was like, Hey, he would, t- he, the Lord would tell me this in different seasons that, um, to bloom, that doesn't matter where you're, where you are, mm-hmm. you have the ability to thrive. And so, um, and so that really started resounding with me was that even in the season of motherhood, even if I'm just washing dishes, if I'm going to work and coming home, if I'm changing diapers, if nobody sees me, the Lord still sees me and he says that I'm thriving and I can thrive yes. in that season and in what I'm doing. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so that, that became the, the basis of this t-shirt line for women that, um, that beauty comes in every season, even if it looks stretching and hard. And, um, I can't wait to see what you're doing. Wow. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So I would say, yeah. So being a mom, I feel like has inspired me and actually really, um, encouraged me to, to go after those things for sure. Yeah. That's amazing. So, um, I, this is a side note, but, um, will we be able to see any of your designs anytime soon by chance? Oh, yes. So I currently, yeah, (laughs) I'm so excited. Um, I'm hoping to launch it officially in January. Um, just cause I'm waiting on about two, two more designs and to just get website going and up and some other logistics. Um, but yeah, hopefully January. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait to see. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you mentioned okay. you you work, right? You're you're still working currently. Yes. Okay, so what yes. does that look like for you in being a full time mom and also working? Um, like how do you manage your time day to day? Yeah. Um, so uh, thankfully I, um, I work part-time, um, so for Bethel Media, which is customer service, um, for their, um, website, Bethel TV, awesome. and that's been just, uh, just such a blessing, um, because I get to go into the office, I just work four hours a day when I work, go into the office, um, and then the, um, other rest of the days I work remote, um, so that's been really sweet getting to be at home with Nora. So I'll work when she takes a nap. So, yep, <laughs> so that, yep. So, yep. <laughs> nap time is work time. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll just work while she naps. So normally about two hours. Um, so managing that time, um, I feel like because I have to work, you know, during her hours, I have to be really um, intentional mm-hmm. with the rest of my day. Um, and so what that looks like for me, I've been trying to get up a little bit earlier, um, than when she wakes up, which has kind of been hard because she started waking up 
<laughs> had oh six. Gosh, of so course. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to wake up at five thirty. Oh. Um, and so, um, but I've been trying to wake up early or at night, just have some time to myself. Um, cause I feel like that really energizes me and refreshes me and just kind of gives me vision for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and kind of gives me more of like, Oh, this is how I want my day to look like. Mm-hmm. And, and so instead of just letting myself kind of get swayed around mm-hmm. throughout the day of whatever happens, um, and, uh, and I tried to go outside with her. So we tried to go outside at least once a day to try to break things up because being inside the house mm. can kind of drive you a little crazy. Yep. I guess I, I just try to, to be intentional. Yeah. So that's, that's what I, I try to do. Mm-hmm. Love it. Okay. And what are some things that you do to take care of your heart? Like you mentioned waking up early, but are there other things that you love to do that are just tending to yourself? So you can, you know, reconnect or be refreshed or that kind of thing. Yeah. Meeting with uh, friends or other moms, that's really refreshing um, for me. Just seeing another adult aside from my husband, which I love (laughs) and adore. Um, But just having those intentional times with like friends and Mm -hmm. um, having, you know, deep conversations and getting to laugh and um, sharing about our day and, and, um, and, also, I think just as well, like my t-shirt line, that that really um, fuels me just because I love getting to dream and create and um, and think about new ideas of, of what I want for certain t-shirts. Um, and then also, I would just say being outside. Um, I think I go outside not only for, for Nora, I kind of do it for myself as well, mm. just because... Um, I love, I love just being outside. And I think now too, with all the leaves turning different mm-hmm. colors and, um, it's just so refreshing. Those, those things, um, I feel like would be things that I do that kind of refuel me and fill my cup up. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you experienced mom guilt in your walk as a mother so far? And if so, how do you overcome it? Yeah. Um, yes, for (laughs) sure. Um, so I, I feel like I've experienced mom guilt with, and I don't think this is mainly from other moms, um, per se, because I sometimes I feel like mainly it was from my own self, if that makes sense. Um, where, you know, I would see another mom doing something a certain way or, if I was parenting in that moment, you know, Nora in front of another group of people and I think, Oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. do they think I'm overdoing it or, you know, or this or that, um, or should I, should I be giving this amount of amount of snacks to my child right now? (laughs) Or, you know, or, (laughs) you know, or, um, you know, just different things where I would feel that, that guilt. And, and honestly, I guess it's kind of linked with that comparison still. And, um, that would just kind of come up and I'm like, Oh, this feels so yucky. Um, and, um, and I think just realizing that every mom, um, parents differently. Um, and there's not just one right way, you know? And, um, and obviously I think there's so many healthy, good guidelines, you know, for, for children and how to parent and all that stuff. Um, there's so much great information out there. But you are your best, the best person for your child. Yeah. And I think just remembering that um, and really freed me up and is freeing me up. Mm-hmm. No one else has what I what I can give to Nora. Mm-hmm. And um, and so just really, I think, to um, giving myself that grace and freedom to um, learn yeah. <laughs> and grow. And even if I make mistakes, I think, too, just kind of going back to asking the Lord yeah. um, for for just wisdom, um, for things. And, and I honestly, I'm, I'm referencing another mom in my mom group, but, um, but I just, I guess the mom group in general, just because there would be times where, where something would come up with one of the babies and a mom would go, Oh, you know, I just, you know, asked Holy Spirit or I, you know, asked the Lord and I just felt like I should do this, you know, or I felt peace about this and, um, or, you know, X, Y, and Z and hearing those them say that would just kind of remind me yeah. that um that oh, oh okay like I don't have to know all of it I don't have to you know have it all together or figure it out and 
that I can ask the Lord. And he's just like so willing and so ready to help me in there in that moment and to parent Nora well. Um, and so I think, I think that has really, um, helped me and even just hearing other moms, you know, and just their stories. And I can just even share. And the other day I had a mom friend back in Virginia. She shared how, um, being present with her son, how just choosing to be intentional, even for, if it's like 10 minutes playing with him on the floor, Mm -hmm. um, really changes, I think the the day for him too, Mm -hmm. and just helps him. And, and I think her hearing her say that, cause I have this idea that, oh my gosh, I have to make Nora happy. Mm-hmm. I have to entertain her all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which yeah. is very, it's not true, yeah. you know? Um, and so, and I had that guilt of, oh my gosh, am I, am I playing enough with her? Am, am I, um, am I, you know, being more imaginative, creative, you know, yeah. am I doing enough? And hearing her say that was so freeing that I was like, oh, okay. I actually, it's not my responsibility to make sure she's happy all the time. Yeah actually just to be present yeah. and um, to show her that I'm there. And even if that means just for 10 minutes yeah. being intentional and playing on the floor. Um, and so it was just kind of like, oh, okay, this like mom guilt kind of, you know, came I off. It. That's so great. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I think that's how I deal with it with people like hearing stories from other moms and the Lord and just kind of reminding myself as well. Mm um that it's okay to not have it all together and to learn (laughs) yes that's so great I love that I love that um just reminding even I'm just reminding myself because I totally I go in and out of feeling that you know waves of that of guilt or comparison but reminding myself like oh like God knows exactly what I need in this situation. He knows exactly what she needs. Like he has all of the answers for my exact situation. All I have to do is like tune in. And essentially it's like being present with him too. Um, Yeah. So I just love that. That's so, such a powerful reminder. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. I love to talk about legacy as well. Um, and when you hear that word, what comes to mind? Uh, what is the legacy that you want to leave for your children? Hmm. Um, when I think of legacy, I think of just, you know, not only Nora, but I think of like my grandkids and my great grandkids. And, oh, I um, and um, I think honestly, I didn't, I didn't really have a uh, a paradigm of legacy or even I just I'd never really thought of that until I came to Bethel mm. I think Bethel mm. um does that so well where they're where they're very um intentional about family and building family and healthy families and um leaving a legacy for your kids mm. and um and I think what I want that to look like is that they that they're confident and um and that they can pursue their dreams and go after them no matter if even if um even if it looks hard or where they are or if you know someone has said oh no you know that's you can't do that like right. not to allow someone else's opinion dictate what they can do in life um and that um and that also that I want I want her and my future kids to be powerful people um and I think that I think that's so important for me. It's because I grew up not really knowing that, wow, like I'm a powerful person, um, that, that life isn't just happening to me, but I actually get to make powerful choices. And, um, and that's what I think I want to pass down to, to my kids and my future kids that, um, that I want them to, to know that they're powerful, that, that they are able to to live lives that that are abundant and full and overflowing, and it's not just for them, but that it's for other people as well. Um, that they're kind um, people, and uh, actually, Havila actually was Cunnington, Cunnington, Covington. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's one of those. <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, she said something really great the other day about. Um, something that she, how she parents her kids. And she would say, you know, Cunningtons are kind. Mm. Cunningtons are, you know, X, Y, and Z. And she's like, in in those moments, she said, I would, I would begin to like, say, oh, this is who we are. Mm. You know, it's not just, this is what we do, but it's who we are. And she's like, and this is what I, I tell my kids because, 
um, that's what I want to pass to them. And she said that, and I just thought, wow, like, and I started doing this the other week <laughs> around my husband. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was doing it with Nora, and, and my husband looks at me, he goes, okay, uh, so are, are we are we doing this? I'm like, yes, yes, we Is are. Is new thing now? <laughs> that's so like, great. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I think just even that, like, you know, that, that his lips are kind, that his lips are compassionate. Um, his lips are, are loving and, um, they, they see people, even those who are overlooked, you know, mm-hmm. with, and, and just, so I think things like that and, um, just, yeah, I, I think that, and I just feel like I'm still, I'm still getting, um, growing in that, I think too, because that's not something I, you know, grew up with. And so, um, but, but that's my, my goal. That's my vision. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. And like, yeah, like what a cool thing. Like, even if it's not something that you were raised with, like you can take it on as your own and like be able to learn and like, and process it out with your family as you go. And then it's like just adding on another layer once your kids have it ingrained in them and they can choose to like, press into it more it's just such a cool like domino effect in my mind like when I think about it that's so cool I love that I love that beautiful oh that's so cool okay well I like to end with some fun questions and the first would be do you have a favorite product for yourself or Nora that you're loving right Mm now um honestly I think Right now, I I love um, like bath time. I love yes. shower. I love I love all the bath products. And so um, <laughs> for me, I like to pamper myself with like a good lotion. Nice. Um, and so like something that um, that's like clean and organic, yeah. but um, that you know just moisturizes my skin really well. Right now, I'm really loving this Burt's Bees. Like uh, has cocoa butter and um, some other type of nut nut oil or something <laughs> but that's that's just been so oh, like nice. I just feel luxurious when I put it on but um and then I think for Nora I think that would be the same thing I just yes. I think it's because I love bath time and showers uh-huh. and pampering in that way so I love getting her Aww. a like a really nice um bubble bath that smells really great and she just loves her baths too and then I always give her like lotion her up and that's with this like lavender scent smelling yes. lotion um, yeah, for bed. And so um, I feel like that those, those are the products we're, we're loving now. Yeah, yeah, lotions this time of year, too, are like so oh. important. So <laughs> Yes, I love it's it. It's so true. Yeah, it's, um, and then do you have a favorite holiday tradition with your family? Um, not – I wouldn't say we do yet. I, I, I thought I would try to start one, <laughs> um, but it has – hasn't really caught on yet um so I would I would say we're still we're still waiting on that I I don't think we have one just set yet um I tried I tried to have one last year um it it didn't what did you try to do do you mind me asking (laughs) (laughs) um so I mean it was really like just simple I had gotten a Polaroid camera for my birthday so I said babe we'll take a picture of the Christmas tree and then we can take one next year with Nora in front of our new one And, um, and that hasn't happened yet. Well, so who knows? You know, it December's not over yet. You never know. <laughs> who knows? And, and then uh, I thought, oh, maybe we can like, uh, give Nora uh, ornaments, you know, oh, for her yeah. to choose. We'll go to the yeah. store and, you know, lay some out for her and see which one she gravitates towards. And, um, and that didn't happen either. So <laughs> I think, I think we're, we'll just have to figure out some some better ones. I feel you. I know it's future. it's not totally fair to ask like new, really new families. I think too, but you never know. Like there are some like um, new moms I've asked. They like pull stuff in from when like they had really strong traditions with their family. So I always love just asking yeah. just in case. So that's yeah. yeah no, that's great. I understand. I'm trying to I'm trying to start one this year doing like an advent calendar. Um, Ooh, but awesome. it was so funny because, um, my mom was like, okay, don't overexert yourself. Like you don't have to like plan huge things every day. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, trust me, <laughs> I'm going to make this super easy this year. Cause yeah, there's a lot going on this month. Anyways, total ramble, but yeah, good for thank you. you. Thank you. I'm trying. Yeah. yeah. We'll see how it goes next year. Right. Like we'll see, but 
I yeah, it's yeah. fun to try those things, especially during the holidays. It just makes it feel more festive, maybe. Okay, and then uh, let's see a piece of advice you'd give to a new mom. Um, a piece of advice I would say, um, yeah, I think it would just kind of go back to what I was saying a little bit earlier. It was just give yourself grace, um, for the season that you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and that it looks differently for every mom. And I mean, I still feel like a, a young mom or yeah. new mom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, so just, I, I would say give yourself grace um, and try, try to nap when your child is napping. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> it's so helpful. And I didn't get that when Nora would nap when she was a newborn. I'm yeah. like, oh, I have all these things oh, to do. Totally. I have to wash dishes and, you know, and clean the floors and honestly all those stuff can wait yep. you know and and it's not as important as you think it yep. is in the moment and, um and so i would say that yeah like give yourself grace nap yes. when you can and take care of yourself so like good. even if it means taking a bubble bath at the end of the day or painting your nails yes. or doing something that that makes you feel like you you know um so yeah, that's I think that's so good. that's what I would say. I love yeah. it. Oh, Melissa, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your experiences and even your wisdom too with us. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you again yes, for of course. Yeah. 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 It's been fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. Please share this with a friend if it impacted you in any way and leave a review on iTunes so other mamas can hear the truth that they are enough and they are doing their very best. Be sure to catch up on what's happening in the Mommy Space community every day on Instagram at Mommy Space. And you can email me at mommyspace at gmail.com for questions or interview recommendations. All my love to you, mama. You're amazing. See you next week. Just to say that I'm the one you love It's so like you to do the best for one The best for love It's so like you to do the best